Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Twin Flames, the great spiritual awakening podcast, where every week you can hear real life stories from people who have chosen to answer the call of divine love. My name is Dennis, I'm your host and a certified ascension coach with Twin Flames Universe. And I've been on my Twin Flame journey for a couple of years now. And thanks to the teachings of Union found by True Twin Flame that I am now living in union with. For today, I am very happy to have you with me, Twin Flames in Union, Andy and Nikki. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you? How are you doing today? Hi. Doing good. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I'm very happy to have you. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about your story because there's quite a lot of things I don't know about, especially how you guys met and came to Twin Flames Universe because you, you've been in Union for a couple of years now. And you actually came together before finding Twin Flames Universe. So you kind of started your Twin Flame journey with Twin Flames Universe as a couple, which is a very cool thing. So I'm wondering when and how did you guys actually meet? Um. Okay, so uh, we thought of starting this story uh, from the very uh, uh, beginning. So, because everything like led perfectly to how we met and it was perfectly aligned. Um, do you want to go with your part first? Or? Yeah. Okay. So for me, everything started uh, because uh, we, we, first of all, we live in Albania. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick is from Albania and I'm from Kosovo. Mm -hmm. And I was living in Kosovo uh, in my hometown prison and and uh, everything started when I was at a workshop, at a film workshop specifically. And at that time, it was the summer uh, when I uh, finished high school and I was uh, looking to apply for a university. Mm -hmm. At first, I had in mind to apply for a psychology university. And <clears throat> I was looking forward to that and all the things about that, uh, reading books and stuff. And uh, uh, that led me to apply there finally. I applied and failed the test, didn't, didn't get approved on the faculty. So then in that workshop I was talking about in the beginning, uh, I met a, met a friend from Albania, from where Nick is from, and we really connected. And at that time he was kind of my best friend and uh, we were sharing a lot of mutual stuff about what we liked and whatnot. And uh, at that workshop also, I had someone from my hometown as well that studied in Tirana in Albania, uh, where I live now. And he told me, oh, um, because I told him that I didn't get approved for the faculty. And he was like, why don't you look uh, applying to uh, the film since you're already doing film why don't you look uh, to apply to the film uh, film directing university in albania and i was like oh that sounds really good and uh, yeah so i was uh, uh, i was focusing on that and i was like perfect uh, it was perfectly aligned because i already made friends from there in that workshop mm -hmm. so i already had someone in that city. And uh, an important detail here is that I remember when I was a child, uh, uh, one time with my, uh, we came to, to this city where I live now uh, with my parents and I was so astonished. Something like felt really home about this city. It was not the city itself, but it was like, oh, I would like to live here in the future. And I was very small at the time. I remember it very clearly. And I always had that in my mind from that time, that I always had this city as an option to, to you know, live in the future back then. Uh, anyway, uh, then I uh, went to apply to the university here and I, I got approved and I started the university here and I started hanging, hanging around like, with a lot of uh, a new friends that I made from that friend back then in a workshop. And in that area of friendship connections, it, it was also Nikki. Mm. It was like that uh, uh, white, uh, con uh, white social, social environment. environment, yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, the first time that I met uh, Nikki was through that friend that I was in a workshop. We uh, it was we went to a bar, a tattoo bar called Iron Brush, and uh, we were actually at that time. Uh, it was like my teen years and uh, we were like uh, a lot into parties, raves, this kind of stuff. And I was working in this bar, just as you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. Nikki was working there. And anyway, I went uh, there with my friends and uh, Nikki went to talk to him because they knew each other. And uh, we didn't say anything to each other, actually. We no. didn't even say hi, but the way... <laughs> And the way she was staring at me, it was like, it was, uh, it was really weird, kind of, because it was like, I knew her, but she also knew me, but we were looking into each other, like. We were like, we never spoke to each other, who are you? <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was a really, really, like, spontaneous and really strange look, but re really f familiar at the same time, you know. Yeah. Anyway, that was the first time we met. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, just to move forward to how everything happened. Um, also, one important detail that I would like to mention here is that uh, when, uh, before, how, I, I would like to talk a, a bit about how I uh, manifested Nikki inside of me, like uh, the spiritual side. Please, absolutely do. I would have asked that anyway. That would have been my next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so when um, when I was uh, like at my early teens and like full teen years, I, uh, I, I had a lot of, um, a lot of feelings about a lot of girls uh, that I really uh, thought I loved. And I really loved them at the time with all of my heart. And I constantly had this pattern where I was being cheated on. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that felt like really heartbreaking from time. Uh, like it was because it was a pattern. It was like, why, why is this happening to me? Uh, so, but I always felt this, uh, had this belief that real love exists, you know, because I, I knew from where I knew it was because uh, when I when I got it hurt really really much when I got cheated on and it wouldn't hurt that much if I wouldn't care if I wouldn't believe that real love exists because I believed it that much so passionately it really hurt and uh, yeah so uh, I always uh, imagine my uh, dream wife dream partner I always it it wasn't like a really physical like but it was a feeling more like a feeling that how I would like to live and share my uh, life with my partner and it was all about the feeling it wasn't particularly about how the physical looks you know even though I had an imagination of that as well but it was more about the feeling anyway uh now getting back to the story, so how we <laughs> uh, got to be together. Uh, so from that uh, eye contact that we had in that uh, bar in uh, Iron Brush, uh, we never spoke uh, to each other again until a rave that uh, and that we both went not together but separately. But we we saw each other there, and we had another like really awkward eye contact there like we were, <laughs> I was because I want to be fully honest now uh, mm -hmm. at that time I was uh, into psychedelic drugs and uh, both were yeah mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we were uh, we were at the time in our uh, in our life that uh, we were both experiencing this uh, hippie spiritual awakening stuff that is actually mm -hmm. just uh, that uh, from in that at that time we thought there was real, there was, was real spirituality because we were not spiritually developed and didn't mm -hmm. understand it quite clearly anyway uh, we after 
that was the second time we had like the eye contact with Nikki. And it was this time it was like much longer and it was really more even more spontaneous because we didn't have like the third person that we met through, but it was just like I was with my friends, she was with her friends, and we just saw each other and we, we were we just stood up like just looking at each other. It was really uh I it was really interesting from from my side because I never felt that much peace before uh, by seeing someone because uh, usually in my with my soulmates in the past I would have a lot of anxiety seeing someone like I had a crush on or I liked I, I wasn't like really comfortable I would get nervous mm -hmm. even though at that time I didn't know that I liked Nikki consciously mm -hmm. but subconsciously there was this uh, crash thing but not consciously yeah. I wasn't I, consciously aware that I have a I like uh, I like this girl <laughs> anyway um that was the second time that we had that eye contact now the every everything led to uh, uh after uh, after we uh, after that we I went to the lake uh, one day and with a friend that I had at, at the at that time, uh, he was uh, a friend of mine that had a crush on Nikki, liked Nikki a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nikki came with us to the lake. And also, at that time, uh, the uh, girl who thought that I, I was her uh, twin flame was there as well. So there was this situation. My friend, who's, uh, who is my, who is my soulmate? Yeah, yeah, uh, was my soulmate. Was Nikki's soulmate? Was with me and uh, the girl that thought I was her twin flame was with Nikki for her husband to the lake. So um, and uh, I was in in psychedelics there as well, and uh, uh, like uh, they, they were kind of all looking after me, so to say. And um, the thing is that uh, this, uh, uh, the, the girl that thought that I was her twin flame was trying to communicate to me in different ways. For example, uh, the, there was a specific moment, there were two dogs and she was trying like to communicate to me through dogs and stuff and it wasn't working. <laughs> and she got really upset and she, she just left, yeah. she, she left. And uh, it was just me, my friend, and Nikki afterwards. Mm -hmm. And at that, and we stopped at, at a spot, and I was just uh, seeking everything all in and just in my own uh, in my own vibe. And Nikki and her uh, uh, and her friend who who liked Nikki uh, were dancing, singing, like doing a lot of stuff together. And I was looking at them because I consciously wasn't aware that I loved, I liked Nikki, you know, I didn't like feel like jealousy or these kind of things that uh, you may feel at the beginning of the journey when you see your twin flame with someone else. It's like, it's like that part is not real. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't feel anything like that, but the thing I felt, it was like, whoa, like I, there is something about this girl, like just the way she, uh, her like cartoonish expressive behavior uh, the way she reacts and you know, the way she sings and the way she uh, like her authenticity it was really drawn uh, into me and uh, I thought that Nikki and uh, my friend were matching a lot as a couple when I was not seeing that actually uh, Nikki was my twin flame there because I was seeing Nikki and, and not him particularly but I in my mind I was thinking yeah in my mind I was thinking that they were they were looking messy together when I was seeing only myself Nikki there yeah. me, and me. Like you were seeing yourself with me yeah I was seeing <laughs> exactly and that was the first uh, awareness that I got that uh, she may be my twin flame, even though uh, this is an important detail. At that time, I uh, didn't know about twin flames. I mean, I knew that 
about this concept that there, there, there may be some someone who is meant to be your with you, like you may be the same soul, and this kind of concept. I kind of heard that, but I wasn't into that. I never like studied or something about that or anything, mm -hmm. because also it was like the beginning steps of me getting into spiritual spirituality. As I mentioned before, yeah, I was like an amateur at that time, and. Um, Anyway, uh, we left uh, from the lake and we decided to uh, meet later at the night, at the same day. We met there and Nikki was talking to me and talking to him and I was like just chilling and everything. And then Nikki left and I was with my friend and I was like, oh, you two really are matchy. You, you, you go together. I see how Nikki likes you. And my friend told me, are you kidding me? Because he was re really upset. That's why we were talking. Uh, are you kidding me? Like, did you not see how she was looking at, at you? I know her because uh, he knew her from a lot of years ago. I just met her. And he was like telling me, I, I, I knew her, com I uh, know her completely. The way she was looking at you, it was different. I know that look. I was like, I didn't notice that. I didn't recognize that. I, I still wasn't believing him that Nikki was uh, looking at me like that because I still wasn't fully conscious about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, we decided, we started with Nikki to talk on uh, Messenger, Facebook, and uh, we, we started dating. Not uh officially but we just we, we wanted to be together and we just mm -hmm. wanted to hang out and we were like inseparable <laughs> yeah we were we like out every day yeah and we spent like the whole day together mm -hmm. yeah and this is an important detail when it comes to twin flames is that uh you can't be lovers if you are not friends first True. and yeah. that's that's the main part of our lives where we uh, solve this and when we actually realized is that because we actually liked each other low key, but we never consciously like kind of accepted that we, we were just enjoying it to be with each other so much like yeah. friends and yeah. you it, don't put a label on it. Mm -hmm. really. It was just it was just a vibe, you know, just being together right. and uh, having fun and doing what we liked and just uh, and since at that time we were like hanging out with this social environment that was very toxic, sorry, very toxic mm -hmm. uh, with drugs and a lot of stuff, we slowly started to like disengage with them. We started more hanging out together yeah, yeah. and that social environment, like people from there, like started to create, uh, started to have a resentment towards us because we were uh, only uh staying with, staying with each other and uh, we saw that it was not a healthy environment for us to stay in mm. and we slowly started like to disengage from them and um the uh, that was like how we met and how we started now how we mm, how we realized that we were twin things uh, one night, uh, Nikki uh, called me to meet uh, with her in the museum, uh, near, near the museum outside. That is near my parents' house. Yeah, and we were we were talking, uh, and we were talking about uh, about some things. I don't know what we were specifically talking about, but you, I was, I was expressing my feelings about something. I was upset about something, I think, and you told me you are completely like me right do you remember that moment when you when you told me like you are just the same like me yeah yeah and, and i knew about twin flames at this point because mm -hmm. but i will i will share my part yeah mm -hmm. you know, the whole thing connects <laughs> okay i guess you can go now because um i can proceed okay. later yeah. yeah um so for me it started with being uh, having like a false twin flame experience when I was very young, like around 15. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like my heart was broken and everything. And I thought that this person was me, but 
in a way that was not very mature because I didn't know myself so much to know that to to make like the the uh, difference between a false twin flame and a twin flame and mm -hmm. I thought that that person was my twin flame for years and the thing was that I was feeling like I have this love and I want this love and there's this love that I'm going for and I was searching that in every relationship that I had mm -hmm. because I wanted that and I knew that if it's inside of me then it must be true and I was seeing that because I was very spiritual even like at a young age and I used to check nature and how things work and how harmonious nature is and I was like well it should be the same for people mm -hmm. it means that if I have this thing inside of me that tells me that true love exists then it should be true and I didn't want to give that up so I actually followed it through um, and until like I was 18 I had my last relationship with um, a soulmate and I was like well, this is this doesn't actually satisfy me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't feel like this is the love of my life and I want to spend my whole life with this person. And if there was, if I didn't like feel that satisfaction and that harmony inside of me with the person, then I was like, okay, I will stay alone. And that's okay because maybe I was wrong. Like maybe true love is meant to be alone. Like maybe this is how I am or I, I was still like exploring and trying out experiences to, to, to see like what was the truth <laughs> so until like a day one day which was around the time that Andy started sharing like the story <laughs> um, I met with a friend who was actually my elementary school friend uh, which we got into spirituality together and she was telling me well look there are twin flames do you know about twin flames mm -hmm. and I was like no what what is that and then I entered the internet and I took every single page on the internet mm -hmm. <laughs> to try and find information that made sense for me mm -hmm. about twin flames and what they were and I was like, well, yeah, it's a soulmate, but it's the same consciousness. It's the same, um, they are you. They're not like another person. They don't leave, they are there. And I was like, well, yeah, yep. Like I was thinking even now that my fake twin flame was my twin flame. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's, that means that the, the truth is real. Like what I felt all these years was real and this friend of mine, meanwhile, was the friend that Andy said before that thought that and Andy was her twin flame. Ah, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, okay. I felt, and she she used to talk to me about Andy all the time. She was like, well, he didn't reply to me, and then we got we got out, and we <laughs> had this thing, and this happened, and he blocked me, and I was like. Well, I was seeing the truth there, but I, I wasn't anybody to tell her because mm -hmm. the twin flame experience, like it has to be, even if it's a fake twin, like nobody can tell you that, look, that's, that's your fake twin flame. It has to be fully experienced and self released. Yeah, self-discovered. Um, and then like, we used to go out all the time, like in this period of time with this friend. And then, like, we went out in that day, I believe, yeah, mm -hmm. it was that day that Andy was on psychedelics, and I was there with this friend that thought that Andy was her twin flame, <laughs> and we stood there, and we, like, had fun and stuff, and then, like, she left because she got upset, mm -hmm. like, as Andy said, and my experience on the other side of the story, as Andy was sharing, it was that I was there because I felt deep in my heart that I had to be there. <laughs> so I was like, well, I have to stay here 
like this feels actually good. Like I will explore explore this and go to the end of this and mm -hmm. see what what the truth is about this. Yeah, because uh, an important detail here is that uh, Nikki was a closer friend to uh, the girl that thought that I was her twin flame, the the one that left. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. she was uh, a close friend to me or uh, my friend, you know, mm -hmm. and she stayed anyway and left. Uh, let her friends uh, leave. Mm, right. um, yeah, and like the whole time I was like, well, this guy is very weird. <laughs> and I was like, there is something about him that I cannot label or put in a box or like just marginalize in my mind that this is this. And I was like, well, there must be something here so I need to see what it is. And I just went full, like without even like doubting myself. I was like, well, just, just follow this. This this is like the good feeling of the universe that mm -hmm. is giving to you right now. You have to go through through this. And I was like, yeah, okay, new challenge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um yeah, like after this, as Andy said, we started like going out we started to talk to each other um, and they started like to to show me that actually he didn't have feelings for the girl that thought that andy was her twin he, mm -hmm. yeah her twin flame but she he saw her as a as a sister mm -hmm. as a person that he cared for yeah yeah but she thought that that was Love. So it was a bit of um, misunderstanding and misperception of stuff because everybody was on a, on a journey there mm -hmm. <laughs> and exploring and seeing. Yeah, and yeah. I think this is a thing that happens with people that when you love someone, uh, they can uh, misperceive it and take it romantically, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when you are actually just loving them because you're loving them. Yeah, you know? because you're a caring person. Yeah. And right. So that was the situation there. Yeah. So after this, uh, we started to go out more and more. And the fake twin flame of Andy was like, well, you did this to me and now you're going out with him. And I'm like, look, I knew that in my heart, like he was my twin flame. And after, and I'm going to show how it happened that we actually recognize each other. Uh, yeah, we were like talking with each other as Andy was saying, like in the museum, by the museum. And he said, and I told him that, look, we are we are actually the same. And I was like, well, I think that you are me. And I think that you're my twin flame. Mm -hmm. And we were like, well, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. we're, we're okay with that. <laughs> At that time, since we were like a lot into psychedelics and stuff, we were like uh, really bypassing a lot of stuff spiritually and we were mm -hmm. really laid back as people and uh, even though we uh, we shared that we Nikki shared that we are twin flames and it was very relaxing to for us it wasn't like something that overwhelmed us and we started mm -hmm. like oh, at that moment okay yeah. at that moment yeah and uh, uh, we, we were just cool uh, hippie kind of people you know mm -hmm. it was like, oh, okay we, we were, were like, twin flames cool. let's go yeah, we're flames. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was that, like that this is uh, this this is all the part before coming into the teachings of uh, yeah. 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 yeah so um, uh, because i want do you have anything yeah, I else okay. to, and like the part with the fake thing yeah um then like after we actually recognized each other i was like well yeah i found my twin flame and now we are staying together and everything and like we completely let's say like we did cut off like most of our our friendship like from before because we saw that it was not uh supporting us like emotionally and spiritually yeah. and also physically they were judgmental for our union yeah they were like they didn't they didn't want us to be together and we were like i, I was mainly like nope <laughs> no 
not gonna take that i'm sorry like this is my man i found him i don't care about anything else <laughs> like for real like i i can't accept people judging or being against me or the love that i actually uh deserve and that is created for me mm -hmm. and this is what i told actually to the fake twin flame of andy because i was like i have to talk to you because she was a very long friend of mine like mm -hmm. about 10 years of, of friendship or maybe more and i met her and i was like look this is what is happening this is what the truth is and she was like, well, how do you know? Maybe you're wrong. I feel like he is my twin flame. And I was like, I'm sorry, but I know. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't like take this risk if I didn't know in the depth of my heart that this is it. And I was ready, I was ready. And I did take out everything in my life that was against this union, like my union because I've been searching for this my whole life since I was like very young. And this was like my main focus. And now that I have it, like I'm not gonna just let people come and try to try to break it. Like it, it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I had to, to make a choice and I had to let go of my friendships and my, my friendship right there that was actually against me because it revealed itself. And I had compassion because she was going through her own part of the story her own journey about it so yeah she wasn't very happy <laughs> let's, let's say that but I couldn't couldn't like fix her I couldn't do anything I, I was I just told her the truth and I'd had to honor myself mm -hmm. so you made you basically made the loving choices towards yourself that uh, and you claimed your union even yes. more yeah I did. E even though from outside there let's say in other situations there might have been attachments to for example 10 years of friendship with people and uh, those kind of stuff or for yeah. example family members yeah. in some cases but when you actually choose to be with who god created you to be nothing can stop you mm -hmm. and uh, and fear can tell you that okay these bad things will happen or these people will hurt you or these people will come to revenge or something. But actually when you walk in faith with God, everything opens up uh, for your union. If you mm -hmm. really claim it and really seek it in your heart. But if you do it uh, for, uh, if you do it for other um, like agendas, just to, uh, just to get, high of it or get something outside it doesn't work it, it doesn't work like because that. it's pure and this is how you know it's divine because it has power and mm -hmm. it has true power okay uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um you want me to yeah. continue okay so yeah at that time i was uh i was skipping university because i went to university there obviously as i mentioned I was skipping university. I literally didn't care about university at all. Uh, I, at first I thought I, I did, but God was actually leading me to another country to meet her because how, how I explained mm -hmm. that I manifested her and seek her in my right. life. Just a disclaimer, like when we talk about God, we talk about source, we talk about the universe, whatever that the, every, anybody is comfortable with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, attracts love in your heart, in your life. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I was skipping university and uh, at that time, uh, Nikki was uh, Nikki was staying at the apartment, apartment I was sharing with these university people that I was, uh, and sometimes it was getting really uncomfortable because, yeah. because it, uh, we didn't have our own space. We didn't have our own space, exactly. And uh, that time, at that time, now this is a really key uh, moment of uh, our journey as well that led us to this teaching that we are in now, is that time we met, met our false uh, spiritual, spiritual, spiritual teachers. teachers. Mm -hmm. well, uh, it was a friend, uh, a friend of Nikki, uh, she was a psychic. She, her, uh, her husband, husband yeah. was a psychic as well. 
and her best friend yeah. was a psychic as well. They were three people uh, that were psychics and only well, and didn't actually have anyone else. They were only uh, yeah, staying, only these three people. Only these three people. They this didn't have three. any friends, anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time, since we were not really spiritually developed and we we were really high and really all over the place, really not grounded in that aspect. We were also very young. Yeah, it was it was our teen years. Yeah, like 18, 19 mm. at that time. Uh, we're now uh, 23, by the way. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that time ago. And uh, at that time, uh, we started to believe whatever they were uh, telling us. Telling us. Yeah. And because we thought, sorry, we thought that they had like these gifts that they could help us with our union and uh, they could help us with uh, twin flames in general or with what the truth was, because as we were spiritual people, we were searching for the truth. Mm-hmm. So we thought that, well, these people, they act and they portray themselves as they know stuff, but it was very clear that they did not, but we will go into that a bit mm-hmm. later. Yeah, say. they were psychics and the way they were all, all putting the, their selves out there was really in a confident way and really in a logical way as as well so so if you were not really mature spiritually you you kind of believe them you know Mm -hmm. and uh, the it was all about exploration for us to be honest even though we we were not consciously hey let's explore this because we really believed that at the time we really went into them and we were they were like a part of our family. Like uh, they were three people, and now we we had this gang that we were five people <laughs> hanging around all the time mm-hmm. because they were like, okay, come to our gang. Now we we are together. Yeah, and we, we take care of you. Yeah. We're like we're, we're, and, we're good together. We go out uh, in places. Mm-hmm. We hang hang around each other and stuff yeah. like that. And so they, what they were dealing with mainly, uh, they were dealing with some kind of witchcraft yeah it was pretty it was pretty dark yeah it was pretty dark and it was really judgmental and it was all focused all focused on duality it was not it was like uh, okay so there is bad bad and good in the world and uh, Mm -hmm. uh, we have to fight the bad that that kind of mentality you know it wasn't that it was like war at the center at the core yeah it was war this uh this protective this fearful, defensive yeah fearful like energy we have like to to dissociate from the world like we, we can't like interact and be so, social yeah and be social because da 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 all this mm-hmm. bullshit yeah, because, <laughs> i'm not gonna say because the, word, the, but... the what they were teaching basically was that uh, separation. something separation yeah the specifically that something from outside can uh, hurt can hurt you and take your energy away that's that's why they were teaching us to be not be social and stuff because people can leak your energy even if you can don't want you. Like can take somebody you. can can choose in your life that was the biggest lie yeah. that we, we learned from them mm-hmm. like that something can choose in your reality like something can control you Mm-hmm. which yeah. is not true <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. it's funny now because it's, and i have compassion for myself back then because mm-hmm. i was exploring and i didn't know better but when you think about it it's 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 very funny yeah it's it's completely insane yeah. like and uh, to give a bit more insight on how our relationship was with each other at that time it was really abused yeah it was not nice it, it, it was not it was healthy. really bad like we, um, I left my parents' house to live with Andy, mm-hmm. and we got into an apartment that was the size of a room. And we lived together for about six months, and we were very scared. And this, like, when I see the truth there, it was that we didn't know how to navigate the journey. Yeah. And wow. we took, like, the first thing that came to us. And we thought that it was true. And we thought that, oh, this is going to help us. But it was not. And it kept not helping us. It kept Mm -hmm. feeding us fear. And it kept us 
apart, and we started to be very angry at each other. We started being very, very sad and resentful. And in, in comparison to how we were in the beginning, you know, like we were all uh, Loving, passionately yeah, passionate, hanging around, good friends, bubbly, yeah. bubbly. Now it was like the opposite of that after yeah. we met these false teachers. Wow. Uh, and I'm not saying that they uh, they did anything. They did anything yeah. because it was our choice. We chose yeah. to uh, have those beliefs, integrate those stuff yeah. that they were teaching us. It was our but own, the whole, own choice. Yeah, the whole time I had a feeling inside of me that look, something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong here. Like there must be something wrong here because it's not supposed to be like that. Yeah, and that's that's where we were like. In the end of that section of our journey that we lived there, I was like, I'm not going to talk to them anymore. Like, I don't care because I think that they, because they thought that they had power over us, they could actually uh, control us and keep us like, um, keep us there, like keep us feeling powerless. Mm -hmm. And then I started to see that they were actually very, uh, jealous of our union and mm -hmm. jealous of us being twin flames and mm -hmm. us being together because both the girls there in this group they were like we we know who our twin flame is but we actually hate them and yeah. i was like wow. how how can you actually hate your twin flame and that didn't make sense to me and i was like something clicked inside of me inside of my heart and i was like well you have to wake up like this is not it this is not normal <laughs> and at some point they were trying to separate me yeah. from nikki they 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 were slowly but surely starting to uh, because we were a, a group of five people all together they were starting to trying to get nikki off the group and they were more calling me to hang out and go out on trips with them they were not calling Nikki anymore so that was the moment that we started we like knew. kind of to realize yeah. that they were jealous of our union mm -hmm. and didn't want us together and they were all uh, they were really upset whenever Nikki came it was not like they were more having fun as it looked from the outside like when I was there by myself and when we were as a union you know mm -hmm. they, and so we saw that and it was like the last red flags like we had hundreds of red flags in the meantime but this was the last one i was like look you know what i will find out about my about everything myself mm -hmm. and i need to do this because i need life to to reclaim my whole energy and move forward because this is not okay and i the only thing that i knew at the time was that i'm not going to let andy go and mm -hmm. i'm going to stay with andy and that's it because that was the that was my home, let's say, like inside of my heart. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. Then after that, we, we, I think that you went back to Kosovo and I was alone in the, in our small room. <laughs> yeah. And I we was, separated. yeah, we separated, but we separated for, for health. Yeah, we separated, is. we needed, we needed space, space because mm -hmm. the relationship was, was very tough was very toxic we couldn't be around each other we did as nikki said we did we didn't know how to navigate mm -hmm. our uh, relationship and, and that's when we found Jack and Shalia mm. on youtube and i was like i remember there was like a whole week that i was like just going from video to video and from from um yeah i was watching everything I'd say and I was like this clicks this feels grounded this feels loving this feels peaceful this feels good like this mm -hmm. is true because it doesn't oppose anything in reality like because I thought that oh spirituality it means that you have to separate from your body mm -hmm. and at the same time being with your twin flame it's a very grounding experience so I didn't know how to do Both. this part yeah and this is why in my reality, I um, manifested this big contrast, like that phase that we didn't know what to do with each other. Whew. And then <laughs> we made a decision to separate uh, momentarily, like in a small period of time, like for about three months. And I knew the first thing that I had to do was get the classes. 
that was when I knew like you found what you were searching for. These are your teachers. Mm -hmm. And it felt good and it felt truth. And I was like, well, finally I can trust again and I can I can really believe in what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, while I was in my home country, uh, back there, I was praying to God to just uh, be better my life, just to find a way to be with Nikki, like in the beginning. Uh, the thing that I didn't know that the, there was even a healthier way than the beginning mm -hmm. with the teachings of different Shalia. So I was like, praying to God and I was like how because I was really hurt inside I was like this relationship went to shit and I didn't know that I was like uh, that I did that there were there was a solution and I was like always like seeking the same feeling that I was seeking also in my childhood like just to have this life that I always dreamed of mm -hmm. and uh, at that time Nikki in the in another country found uh, Jeff and Shalia. Yeah. And I was like, I I remember I mailed you and I was like, you have to check this couple out. They have what we actually want. They 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 really have it. Their teaching is grounded and it felt good. And I also showed him something that I remember now and it's very it's fun. And I think that Jeff did that intentionally obviously but it was very relieving in my heart and I remember there was like a, a video where they just got their new house not the one where they are right now but the, the previous one mm -hmm. and uh, Jeff had the t-shirt which wrote we all can and I was like oh mm -hmm. wow <laughs> that's true and I, I didn't thought that I could you know but that really gave me strength at that moment that I was so so weak let's say I, I was feeling very vulnerable instead of weak because I felt weaker before than mm -hmm. that actual moment that moment was when I was regaining my strength in my journey and the first thing that I knew was well you have to get a job and you have to get the classes and that was when the next week right when I came back in my parents house I found a new job and it was a job that was very fun and it was very um, relaxing. And I feel like right now I'm very grateful that I had that specific job because it gave me space to process and space to, to, to ground and chill and also like learn. And just saying, I was like a bartender and a waiter in a restaurant, which was very, very nice. Let's say it was a nice vibe, yeah. Now, this was the whole summer before we came back together mm -hmm. um, with the teaching because we bought the classes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we started like, we got a new house, which was the previous house from this that we have now. And we started to watch the classes, like both of us. We started with um, one, one class pass. And um, yeah, we felt like, we started to really build our foundation from, from zero. From our, yeah, from zero. From we, we didn't have any clue. We were like, okay, we need to learn now. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, even financially, we were not in a really uh, great place like we are now, for example. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, that's why, that's why it was like level from level. We started with one class pass and stuff and uh, that order. And um, yeah, I was going to say that uh, I left the university, mm -hmm. and, but I, uh, I, I was really scared to tell my parents at that time, at that mm -hmm. summer when we were separated. Uh, and I was like telling my parents that I am going back to continue mm -hmm. the next year of university when I, when I actually left it. And yeah. but I was going to actually live with Nikki, and yeah. then I told them through uh, online through message, and I was really scared. And at that time, uh, like I remember the feeling how grateful I am. I was at the time 
forgot because when I messaged them, they were like, whatever you want to do with your life. They were accepting and they were really loving. They do support us. They're, they're, they really support us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I didn't expect this because it was like really an emotional you were expecting moment. fear, like a fear base. Yeah, I was, I was, I was expecting to be controlled because that's mm -hmm. uh, how I lived my life for a very long time, you know? Yeah. And it was that fear that I, I I will lose this. And after they told me that whatever you want to do with your life, you can, we support you. It was very loving to hear. Yeah. And that, that was like a really strong push, not from outside, but like emotionally, like really supportive. I felt really supportive just to go like, uh, just to go really uh, deep in my journey with Nikki. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good now to let Dennis maybe ask some questions. <laughs> it's all good, you know. You actually, I, I enjoyed listening to you very much. Like you, it was, it was so beautiful to to just see the entire trajectory of your journey, and you actually answered all of the questions I had, like without me having <laughs> to ask them. So <laughs> it was perfect. Um, yeah, what what I'm uh, wondering now because you mentioned like now you you at this point in your journey you found the teachings of union so how what changed in your union with the teachings of union everything <laughs> everything <laughs> everything like we are closer to each other we are we don't have resentment we've healed like so much and it's like our like doing the mirror exercise which is taught by Jeff and Shalia in their book uh, twin flames finding your ultimate lover um, is like our lifestyle like we do it all the time and it really heals and adds more depth and love and peace to our union and it's it, it just grows it just grows us mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. the thing and we're very grateful mm -hmm. and uh, just to be honest like with the viewers and listeners here is that uh, it, the ascension journey always will uh, challenge you and you, you will experience difficult moments uh, because, but the reason that you are experiencing them is because you're calling in healing where you are separated uh, from your source from and your from your general, good. Yeah. And uh, that's why uh, you experience that contest so you can purify, transcend it, heal it mm -hmm. completely. So you can go to the next level yeah. and it, Shalia says as well that as you heal, uh, it gets better after yeah, some time. It gets, it gets easier. easier and like really lighter. That's mm -hmm. how we're feeling right now. It's like the more that we 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 heal with this teaching, the easier it's getting, and the more mm -hmm. joyful and the more peaceful and the more easy, like emotionally and the situations in our lives are changing like we transcended jobs we transcended um places that we lived in we transcended yeah. we're getting mm -hmm. like promotions we're getting mm -hmm. higher vibration situations and wow. also in our union it feels more clearer and there is so much love and we're getting deeper into our life purpose as well as well yeah that's where we're focusing right now actually mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because the the thing uh, here is that we never couldn't do all these things alone yeah, not, like and there's no chance to be yeah. done alone we uh, we feel really grateful that we have the support of uh, Jeff and Shalia mm -hmm. and the community like all the people that are that n know nothing but unconditional love and yeah. uh, uh, that support like is really uh, is really helpful like yeah, Nikki was it's talking priceless about it's priceless that, yeah it's uh, yeah I don't know what to say because I just feel grateful yeah. it just <laughs> it feels like to me it just completely changed our life mm -hmm. and our dynamic in the union and how we saw the universe and mm -hmm. how we see the world like the world is not out there to get us or hurt us because that's not the nature of nature itself going back to my to the beginning of my my journey where I saw that look nature is very loving and has this armed harmony but it's it's supposed to be the same with people 
-hmm. And that's what Justin Sralia actually showed that there is harmony and there is love. There is, and love is all there that there actually is. <laughs> Only love exists. So, and it never fails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> So yeah, if, one sentence that you mentioned, I remember that was that, you know, when you found your four spiritual teachers, you mentioned that you were just looking for something to navigate a journey. Yeah. And I, I just want to, to highlight that because that's such a vital piece to also yep. what Jeff and Shia provide. And I feel you, your story is really a perfect and beautiful yeah. example for that, that you came together as twin flames even recognize the twin flames but you were like lacking the tools mm -hmm. and means to to navigate what what comes up in your relationship and that's really what jeff and Shia gave you like a way to, yeah. to navigate your your spiritual journey yep and that's like also something like to mention we transcended that spiritual teaching mentality that we thought that oh the spiritual teacher has to um, I don't know, at that moment, I felt like, well, I have to believe everything that uh, uh, somebody tells me that mm -hmm. might know something more, but I had to navigate it myself and know, look, is this actually working in my life? Like, is this actually giving me something? And at that moment with those spiritual teachers, I came to the understanding and reality that, look, they are not giving me anything. They're actually parting me from my twin flame mm -hmm. and after that I started watching videos online like with card readers or people that portray themselves as they know things about twin flames but there was still and they knew but they were like they didn't have like the key let's say like they didn't have it handled they didn't have it grounded they didn't have it look this is how you do it and it's mm -hmm. like a systematic way that you can actually follow and you get the results. Mm -hmm. And this is what we found with Jeff and Shalia, that this systematic way, this like you have the, the, the classes, you can learn from the courses, you can learn from the book, mm -hmm. you can go back to them. And mm -hmm. um, anytime that you feel like you need a piece and you, you find that piece and you can put it in your life and you see that you have results. Yeah. This is like, we went from mm -hmm. completely having fake twin flame teachers that actually wanted us not to be together to also fake twin flame teachers which didn't have what they what they were saying that they did mm -hmm. and what they told people to do like they didn't have like the the end result to having Jeff and Shalia with actually give you results mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what i was actually going to say is that there are there is a lot of twin flame information out there, like tons of lots of like theoretically, like there is a lot of information. Like people know about how the universe fun functions a lot. There is a lot of knowledge, mm -hmm. but what the what separates Jeff and Shalia from the rest is that uh, Jeff and Shalia teach you how to have actual results in your mm -hmm. life and how to actual how to take action and really heal yourself and how to navigate to, everything every endeavor of your life not just, yeah not just know because knowing is okay but without putting uh, putting the action of that uh it, nothing is going to change like yeah. it's yeah. awareness just knowledge like you have to do something with awareness and knowledge for things to actually shift mm -hmm. i love that i remember when i found jeff and chilia that was also the thing that really hooked me because I was like all these other people like share information but I, I wasn't finding any place where I could find like information on what to actually do right and how to work the process and how to actually make change happen yeah Jeff and Shia really like that's all they do they, they give you the knowledge obviously and the information but just for the means of you putting it into practice and really mm -hmm. living that information yeah beautiful so um i have two last questions for you and one would be with with this experience that you've had of having false spiritual teachers first and then finding jeff and julia as your true spiritual teachers generally speaking what would you say 
how can you recognize whether someone is a true spiritual teacher? Well, first, you know, in your heart. And second, you apply what they are saying and you see, like, are you getting results or not? Are mm. they temporary or are they like, do they stay there? Like, do you feel a shift inside of you? Do you feel like you're changing? Or is it just like a temporary thing that satisfies you for a little bit and then like you go back to the where old patterns, like where you were before? Because mm -hmm. like healing spiritually with the teaching of, of, of Jeff and Shalia actually transcends your life. It's like an ascension journey. Like you actually vibrate up and everything changes. Like you don't go back. It's not that it's just a temporary thing that you get and then like you feel good for some time and then like you're back back like to, to the previous time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's eternal. It, uh, it bases on reality and so it, yeah. it is uh, basically it's, uh, it's eternal because uh, when, you, when you actually put those things in action, you and when you transcend and uh, transcend stuff and get results in your life, it, it's like uh, you want to do it more, mm -hmm. and you, it feels good. It, it feels good, and you actually feel better, and you feel uh, you become a more loving person. Yeah. And it's like you literally uh, start pur purifying your consciousness and getting. Uh, uh, getting closer to your higher self and to your divine self and uh, yeah basically the essential yeah. mm -hmm. so what i would say is just like really analyze really see what are they what are they saying like what are they showing do they have what they claim to have do they have what they are trying to tell you to do like you have to go through the journey like mm -hmm. you can't just look at something and judge it and without actually going through it yourself to find out what the truth is. This is what I would say. Thank you very much. It's such an important piece and I'm very happy that you, you put it this perfectly for yeah. our listeners. Yeah. So my last question for you is um, something a bit again related to your journey. And so if you could go back to the very beginning of your journey and give that version of yourself a message or a piece of guidance, what would that be? Take it easy. Um, be careful with yourself and love yourself and have faith. Have faith and trust yourself, trust your intuition. Because this was a big part for for us, like with the fake twin flame teachers mm -hmm. mostly, because we were not having faith in our own intuition inside that would tell, was telling us like, look, there is something wrong here. Like you have to, to, to divide yourself from, from this situation. Like it's not healthy. And if like your, your insight tells you like something is wrong, you have to trust it because it's actually the voice of the universe telling you, look, <laughs> there's something wrong here. Just take, take action, do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the teachings of Jeff and Shalia completely have ch changed my life and keep changing it from day to day. It's like a day-to-day -day work. It never stops, but yeah. it, it gets better and better. And uh, I want to uh, go deeper into it more and more mm -hmm. than I, when I do it. It's, it's because uh, I, I feel closer to God, you know? And mm -hmm. when I mean I feel closer to God, it's not a cliche thing to say but it's actually i get closer to everything with to my twin flame uh to to people i manifest i manifest positivity goodness in my life and uh, everything just feels better and i'm really like grateful uh yeah i'm really grateful for the teachings of jeff and shalia what was the the advice that you were going to give yourself in the beginning of the journey. Yeah, have faith, have mm -hmm. faith and have also compassion for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very important. Well, thank you two very much. We've come to the end of our time today, but it, yeah, it was an absolute joy to listen to you. Thank um, you. Really, really nice. And 
thank you for being my guest for today thank you for thank having you us much. we had like a lot of fun yeah. and yeah we're, we're yeah it feels very good it feels great to share our oh. journey yeah. yeah it actually helped us as well like with grounding it and really like seeing how far we've come so we're very grateful for for this podcast thank you for inviting us yeah, i'm very glad to hear that and again thank you for being here and at the end, I want to also thank all of our listeners for listening. And if you want to hear Twin Flame Separation, for good to you and live a peaceful and beautiful life with your Twin Flame, as Anne and Nikki have shown us is possible, then I invite all of you to go over to twinflamesuniverse.com and check out all of the products we have. And there's also a free introduction course that I absolutely love that really introduces you to Twin Flames and the dynamic and how to, how to really navigate this journey. And it's really a great starting point. And that's, you can sign up for that on the website as well. So definitely do that. And otherwise, I wish all of you a wonderful journey and many blessings. And we will see you next time. Bye.